In our Sunrise Smart Start this morning, a 34-year-old man has been sent to the hospital after an armed robbery in Rochester. Police responded to Lyle Avenue around 10 last night. They say the victim was approached by one or more suspects who assaulted and robbed him at gunpoint on nearby Hague Street. While trying to escape, the man was also shot at, we're told, but was not struck, according to investigators. He's at the hospital with minor injuries. No arrests have been made. Anyone with information about this incident should call 911. Rochester police investigating a five car crash on Lake Avenue last night as well. They responded around 730. Investigators believe two cars were racing at the time of the crash. We're told one of the drivers was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. That investigation is ongoing. Well, Democrats in both the, both the House and Senate pushing the president's social spending plan trying to appeal to the American public. Meanwhile, Republicans say that plan spells disaster. We are joined once again by Washington correspondent Basil John, live in D.C. this morning. Basil, good morning. Is there a deadline to pass the spending measures here? Well, Mark, good morning. And uh, you wouldn't say that there is a deadline per se, but there is a goal. So Democrats want to, at the most, have this passed before the end of the year. Now, that's the Senate's plan. House Democrats, they are trying to fast track this. And right now, their intention is to actually vote on it by either Friday or this weekend and have it passed by uh, before Thanksgiving. So they're trying to move as fast as possible on it. All right, we'll see if they can keep to that uh, timetable. In the meantime, can Democrats Democrats expect any support from Republicans here? It's actually fairly unlikely that Republicans will show any support. For the most part, we only saw any support between both Republicans and Democrats when it came to the bipartisan infrastructure deal. But Republicans have stayed hands off of this deal. If anything, they've just been talking about how uh, supporting the Build Back Better plan, how Democrats will just end up increasing inflation uh, and increasing the debt throughout the country if they go ahead with it. So instead, Democrats are just going to be relying on their negotiations between progressives and and moderates to come to an agreement and then go through the reconciliation process so Republicans will not be involved. All right, see if they can go it alone, so to speak. Uh, Basil, thank you. We'll continue to watch this. We know you will as well. We should mention today the president will host leaders from Canada and Mexico at the White House as well. It will be the first North American Leaders Summit since 2016. In other news, one of the men charged with taking part in the deadly riots at the U.S. Capitol back in January has been sentenced. Pictured here, Jacob Chansley, also known as the QAnon shaman, stormed the Senate chamber that day wearing face paint and that fur helmet with horns. He has been sentenced to 41 months in prison. Though he's not accused of any violence, prosecutors say Chansley was the public face of the Capitol riot. Before sentencing Wednesday, he told the judge it was wrong for him to enter the Capitol and he accepts responsibility for his actions. In Kenosha, Wisconsin, jurors are set to begin a third day of deliberations in the trial of 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse. His defense team yesterday asking for a mistrial in this case, saying they had only a lower resolution copy of video shown in court. Rittenhouse faces five counts, including first degree intentional homicide for killing two men and seriously injuring, injuring another during those protests in Kenosha last year. Well, two of the three men convicted of assassinating Malcolm X more than a half a century ago are now set to be exonerated. The Manhattan District Attorney apologizing to the two men, saying they did not get the justice they deserved. Muhammad Aziz and Khalil Islam were convicted in the 1965 assassination of the civil rights leader. Now, 55 years later, their sentences will be vacated after an investigation found prosecutors, the FBI, and police withheld information that should have cleared their names. A third man, Talmadge Hayer, eventually confessed to the murder in 1966, but Aziz and Islam were still charged in the case. All right, James, uh, taking a look at the forecast this morning, warm but uh, wet as well. We saw some evidence of that in our most recent sunrise traffic report. Yep, yeah, wet roads certainly. Uh, if you tried to get uh, 
out before the rain arrives. Well, you missed your window. Unless you're in Wayne County, maybe you just have a ride along 31, then you're in good shape. You've got a little bit more. Same with the Finger Lakes, uh, still holding off there. But if you're in Rochester, you're on the west side, you're seeing rain. It's going to rain off and on for pretty much the rest of the morning. It'll be a soaker of a start to the day. Uh, you see those rain chances up to near 100% uh, for the next few hours. Then that percentage drops as well as the temperatures. It'll be cooler this afternoon, but it will certainly be drier. Mark. All right, uh, James, uh, thank you. Another check of the roads, as we mentioned, with our sunrise traffic. Uh, still paying attention to 390 right on cue. A live look here. There was an earlier accident in the southbound lane at Brooks Ave, but uh, you see things are flowing much better now. 490, 590 up to speed at last check as well. In other news, a Rochester woman charged in a fatal hit and run has been found not guilty of murder. Police say 24-year-old Angelina Griffin intentionally struck and killed 34-year-old Omar Coker after Coker had robbed Griffin last February on Council Rock Avenue in Brighton. Griffin has been cleared of that murder charge but was found guilty of leaving the scene of an accident. Well, bail has been set for the 21-year-old accused of murdering a 47-year-old woman with a hatchet. Joseph Rivera pleaded not guilty to charges associated with the murder of Heather Majors back in July. Rivera was originally held without bail, but according to his attorney, that bail has now been set at $1 million. Rivera is due back in court next month with a trial date set for late March. Well, in Rochester, Mayor-elect Malik Evans addressing a rise in violence contributing to the city's city's deadliest rather year on record. Evans says getting violent offenders off the street will be a short-term solution. Long-term, he wants to see his administration try to figure out the underlying causes that are contributing to teenagers getting involved in violent situations. Eradicating violence from our community will take a whole of community approach with clear communication and effectual coordination. We need to make sure that we have increased job training program, that we are um, providing people all the socio emotional economic support in order to make them not to go down that path. Well, the mayor elect also discussing bail reform during yesterday's address, saying once he takes office to January office January 1st, rather, he and his team will review data before drawing any conclusions there. Pittsburgh schools uh, warning parents there could be a possible bus driver shortage coming up. The district sending a letter to families this week saying schools there are not immune to the shortage that's impacting schools across the country as well. The letter says the district expects driver availability could become even more limited during the winter months, leading to delays and possibly the cancellation of extracurricular activities. Pittsburgh schools began the year with 92 bus drivers. They're down to 78 at last check. Now to the latest on COVID-19 this morning. Local health officials say with more people now eligible to get the booster vaccine, it could be could mean rather fewer mutations for the virus. Governor Hochul announcing this week anyone 18 and older can get a booster in any region of the state with a high transmission rate of the virus. The Finger Lakes and Western New York regions currently have some of the highest positivity rates statewide. 451 new cases confirmed yesterday in Monroe County. The testing uh, positivity rate is now at 8.2%. Time now for a check of the GRE Morning Business Report on this Thursday. Pfizer has inked a deal to allow other companies to produce its COVID pill. The drug maker says it is granting a license for its antiviral pill to, uh, to the medicine's patent pool. That will give generic drug companies the freedom to make the pill for use in nearly 100 countries. It's part of a move to help poorer nations across the globe fight the coronavirus. Wondering what to watch? Netflix has a new top 10 list. It unveiled a website that features the most popular series and movies based on the number of hours viewers spend watching them. Red Notice is the most watched Netflix film right now. Squid Game topped the list of non-English shows. Netflix plans to update that list every Tuesday. And here's what some folks might be talking about at the water cooler. A lunar eclipse will treat sky watchers across the U.S. Friday morning. And our area will have a great view, uh, potentially. We'll talk mm -hmm. to James about that. Yep. This will be the longest partial lunar eclipse in some 580 years. Wrap your mind around that. Yeah, awesome. uh, maximum eclipse, uh, maximum eclipse, 4 a.m., around 4 a.m. with the moon having sort of an orange tint, right, James? Mm -hmm. Yeah, A exactly. lunar eclipse happens when the Earth comes between the sun and the moon, yep. casting a shadow on the moon 
for a brief period of time. Little so, Earth sandwich. Wow. Yeah. 580 years. Yeah, really only Yoda living that long. <laughs> <laughs> Been a long time coming. Yeah, certainly. And uh, we unfortunately got to pray for the day-to-day -day weather to cooperate. Right. You wanted the clear skies. We're hoping for clear skies at 4 a.m. Yeah, we got lake effect bands we'll have to deal with tomorrow. Hopefully uh, they stay north and south of us because we'll have one over Ontario and Erie. So we'll cross our fingers there. But right now, dealing with rain showers. It's uh, probably raining where you are. Most of Monroe County socked in with rain. If you're a little bit further east of us, you're still dry. Canandaigua is still dry. You're waiting on the rain showers, but you get them eventually and we turn much cooler over the next several days. All right, James, as we take a look at the 8 day, we say that is it for now. We always appreciate you tuning in. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next from New York. Have a great day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.